Hello, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be season five, episode three of the haves and the have nots. And the episode is titled, It's Okay to Love. Let's get to it, shall we? So the episode opens with Catherine and Veronica going back and forth, blaming each other, trying to convince David that the other one is trying to kill them. Catherine is on her innocent white woman thing and Veronica is just trying to plead her case but obviously David doesn't believe her because all the lying and conniving she's done for the past five seasons he's not going to believe her and um Catherine said that she's going to call the police if David doesn't call the police and David said he's not going to call the police so he started backing up and he fell over to DA Jennifer because I was like where last episode I was asking where did they move her body but obviously she was still laying on the floor so Veronica sitting up there trying to look all innocent and stuff, but obviously David doesn't believe her. And then like, that's what she gets from all that line and connive she's done all these seasons. Now nobody is going to believe her. And Catherine is about to pin this murder, the DA murder on Veronica. But it wouldn't make any sense because why would Veronica kill her over David? That doesn't make any sense. So Veronica can plead her case that Catherine had the ulterior motive to do so because of Wyatt. Apparently, Catherine didn't know about Maggie Day's murder because Veronica keeps saying she didn't do it. And Jim, uh, not Jim, David's like, just like you didn't do Maggie Day, she's talking about it was a casualty of war. And then Catherine's like, what happened to Maggie Day? So I'm like, none of this wasn't on the news, but I forget we in Tyler Perry land. This probably happened all in one day or two days, but still it will still be on the news. Catherine's not that much out of the loop. And also, Jim calls while they're still standing there trying to discuss what's going on. And he keeps pressuring David to tell him what's going on. I'm like, David already told you it's too sensitive to talk over the phone. But he's still up there asking, what's going on? What's going on? And he told him that um, that he's got out of jail, that he apologized to the judge. And he said Lloyd is going to drop him off home. Lloyd is the, um, the banker. So he said he was going to drop him off home. And David was like, well, just let him drop you off in front of the house and not actually let him come in. And um, Jim's still pestering, trying to figure out what's going on. And Veronica says she wants to go home because she's missed Jeffrey's engagement party. <laughs> and David's like, you're still on this? And she's still, but he told her he's, she's not going anywhere. So obviously she's going to stay there until Jim comes because David has put his foot down finally. So Candace is sitting outside Benny's house and she gets a phone call from Erica. Erica calling her trying to warn her that war is getting out. And she's like, how do you know this? And Erica starts stuttering. So this is why, I, and that's why I say don't trust Erica because she seems like she's shady. She'll seem like she has Candace's back, but it seemed like she's also being very sneaky. It seemed like she's working with war or something. She keeps saying that Candace set warp and Candace was like, you know, Mitch did that. And she was like, really? Like she was shocked. So I don't know, maybe, and then she, Candace also told her that those um, documents were phony, you know, the fake mortgage papers. And she said she wanted the person's number who, who created those documents. And um, she never gave it to her. Um, she just glanced, glossed over the topic. She keeps trying to figure out what's wrong with Candace, trying to find out what's going on, thinking Candace is going to talk to her over the phone. Well, obviously Candace is a professional and she's not giving up any information. And while she's getting ready to get back to her car, Oscar slash Brandon jumps in the car with her. So Oscar is practically begging her to help him with his mark and Candace saying she's gonna scream and want him to get out of her car. But as soon as he leaves the car, she's up there talking about she needs the money. Uh, duh. And then over at her house, Justin and his fellow officers, they found um, Candace is safe and the $20,000 were actually in there. So she was telling the truth about that. And um, they also found those pictures of Jim. Y'all remember when Candace and War when they kidnapped Jim and um, what's the word I'm looking for? Conned him out of the money. Not really con. Let me see. Hmm. Well, when they got the money from him, the $7 million from him, and they took all those pictures and stuff for evidence. So those are the pictures that Jim are trying to get back from war, but the cops already have them. So Justin, he looked at the photos and he gave them back to the other cops. But it looked like he put one 
in the in his back pocket. They didn't really show it, but it looked like when he gave him back the stack, he took one with him. So I don't know. Maybe Candace got some evidence on Justin as well. Next, we have Mitch going over to see Benny to find out what's going on. And him and Benny having the conversation. And he basically told him what was going on, what Candace did. I guess he didn't want to tell him over the phone. So Mitch was like, well, we've been at rock bottom before. And um, Benny's up here trying to borrow money from the mob. And he's like, no, 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 because if you can't pay it back, your family members are gone. And um, basically he asked him, is he going to call Candace? Because he's been sitting up there waiting on Candace. He was like, no, I want Candace to come here on his own. So basically he's been waiting for Candace since the last episode. And Candace still ain't came yet. But Justin got the money, so I don't know where the other cops got the money. So they probably already logged the money into the evidence book or whatever. That what they found it there, and um, the cops came, and him and Benny had a bet. It was like I bet, I bet they look at you first, and obviously they looked at Benny first because he's black. And um, they arrested Mitch, read Mitch's rights, and Benny was like, "Well, I can't bail you out, so you just gonna have to sit up in there." And the guy was like, "Well," and Mitch was like, "Well, my brother is gonna be coming soon, so that was the end of that scene." But basically, Benny finally realizing that war. It was the cause of all of this because as you can recall last season Mitch and War didn't get along but Benny was always taken up for War it was like War's not like that War's not like that but now he's really seeing War's true colors because he's the reason that Candace is in this mess well Candace is the reason that Candace is in this mess but this current mess is War's fault but where is actually Benny's fault because he didn't want to reveal how much money Candace got and how she paid for all the stuff. So it's basically Benny's fault, if you really want to get technical. Then we get Jeffrey, he's still at the hospital. Wyatt, Candace calls him and makes him put Justin on the phone on three-way because basically, you remember at last episode, she was threatening Justin. And Justin was like, don't threaten me. He didn't even want to talk to Candace. He called her a bitch and everything. And then she um, apologized. She didn't want to, but she sucked up her pride and apologized because obviously she needs the cop in her back pocket. And, um... He basically, he didn't say anything like after she apologized, they kept trying to figure out if he hung up or not. And then he finally hung up. Well, Jeffrey said he hung up. He looked at his phone and Kenneth was like, um, he was asked Kenneth, what did you say to him? And Kenneth was like, what I had to, he was like, that's not helping. And she was like, we have to do him my way. Kenneth looked at her phone like, who the fuck this is? What Jeffrey is this? That's how she looked at her phone. But obviously they just gonna have to play it with Jeffrey's way if she wants him to get the cop to help them. And then Wyatt trying to break out of the hospital, like, and he's breathing all hard, like he's so tired. I'm like, Wyatt, like, what are you doing? Like, where, where are you gonna go? You don't have any money. Where are you gonna go? Where are you gonna go, Ryan? Where are you gonna go? So basically at the house in the backyard, um, the cop Justin is up there tampering with stuff, putting markers on the side of the jacuzzi trying to make it seem like it's blood so they lifted the top of the jacuzzi thing and put it over where um what's the guy Candace's baby daddy name is Quincy's body is buried and the cop Justin he goes he's buying time saying he's gonna call the um CSI team to try to see if that's biological blood which we already know because in the, previously before that in the kitchen he took something out of the drawer I'm assuming it was the red marker that he had and went outside and marked it up and then he, the cop was like well I'll just go call CSI he was like no 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 I'll do it so he went outside to buy time so he can go talk to Candace and him and Candace having this conversation back and forth and he basically tells her that he bought her more time for the backyard but they will eventually search the backyard and also that they found the $20,000 in the safe and the pictures of Judge Cryer in the safe as well. And Candace, she's just like, she's just like on her, she, she can't do anything. Like basically she can't do anything. Everything is out of her control. She's not the witty, quick on her feet Candace anymore. So basically all her eggs are in one basket, which is Justin. And she keep telling him it's okay to like Jeffrey. It's okay to love. And he just basically just cutting her off because he don't, he don't want to hear that. And I'm thinking in my head, where's this nosy ass mother? Because she's everywhere and she's always in everybody's business. She doesn't see her son keep going over to talk to Candace since she has her cameras pointing illegally at Candace's house. 
So Benny's sitting on the porch crying and Hannah comes out telling him that he need to be in there packing. And he was like, no, he's going to sit out there and wait for Candace. So she goes back in the house and she comes back out to my surprise to get a chair to sit down. And I was shocked that slave Hannah. She was like, he was like, what are you doing? She was like, I'm sitting here waiting there with you. And he was, she was like, he was like, you don't want me to wait with you? And she, he, he was like, no. And she was like, why? He was like, cause you're going to be telling me to pack my bags every five minutes and trying to tell me stuff that I don't want to hear. So she claims she's not going to do it, but we're going to see because Hannah can't resist degrading Candace, making her seem like she's nothing and always a liar, a cheat a cheater, thieving, conniving, everything. Which she kind of is, but she don't have to keep telling me. So basically, Hannah didn't even last one minute before she started degrading Candace. And Benny told her to just stop. And she was like, no, 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 I gave her a compliment. And she, was, Benny was like, you didn't give her a compliment. You basically, you basically telling her that she's only capable, you saying that she's capable of loving. And I'm like, yeah, she's basically giving her a backhanded com compliment. Because she said, She's Candace capable of loving, so she that's why she's happy that Benny, that she actually gave Benny the toy or that in the house, making it seem like it's still hope out there for her. So the last scene is back at Catherine's house. Let me start off by saying this last scene really solidified that Veronica is crazy, like really low up. So in this last scene, they still going back and forth trying to convince David that each one of the other one did it. And Veronica basically snapped and told David about the flunky that he is, that he always does whatever Jim says, which is true. He never makes a move or anything in a crisis unless Jim tells him to. And he always does other stuff too before Jim even tells him. And um, basically they was going back and forth with that. And Catherine acting like she's dying when she just have a flesh room. The, the thing probably just broke the skin that's why she's bleeding she keeps trying to say let's call the police and um basically the guns was sitting on the the chair with um with veronica and she pulled the gun out and she pointed at at david and Catherine. i think that's probably when jim is probably gonna run in on the next episode and see her actually holding the gun so they really gonna think she did it then and cat and veronica was going back and forth trying to blame everybody she was trying to mean like it was a conspiracy of all three of them conspiring to set her up she just begging one minute the next minute she's acting crazy and she's telling Catherine that she doesn't want an enemy with her and she's trying to bait Catherine into confessing that she's the one who actually done it instead of veronica but that was the end of episode three of the haves and the have not it's okay to love next next episode looks really good this looks like a really good season so far hopefully it keeps the same pace and doesn't drag in the middle because you know how tyler perry does thank you guys for watching subscribe to the channel um follow me on social media i'm gonna put those links down below also buy my ebook football wags off of amazon kindle if you have kindle unlimited you can read it for free thank you guys see you guys next week bye